Hello everybody and welcome back to Ant Holofer. Today we are once again taking a look at our little tutorial series where we went from a test tube setup all the way to a beginning colony. Now, I have made a few videos of these already so be sure to check out the whole tutorial if you want to see a step by step guide to how we got this far. So, today we are going to take a look at how to take care of your first workers and how you feed your colony for the first time and how you just observe the colony from now on and into the next part of the phase. Because so far you hopefully haven't watched your ants too much, but from now you can start to watch your ants a little bit more. So for all of you out there who already have colonies and have done this a million times, please leave any tips and tricks in the comments that I ain't talking about in the video, because we can always learn a few tips and tricks here and there. Maybe even do a part two of my five tips and tricks. Nah, no kidding, that's not what we're here about today. But let's jump straight into the video. So last episode, we ended up leaving the queen to just care for her eggs, larvae and her cocoons. And today, this is how the queen looks. So this right here is the queen with some workers. I have a lot of different queens at the moment, or I have my latest Niger experiment at the time of this recording going on on the sideline. And you can really see between my different colonies, there's a big difference between how many eggs, larvae and workers they have. So this colony right here is a pretty average colony, not that many larvae, not that many workers. But I'd say it's doing okay good. I have colonies that's doing worse, I have queens that have died because they have been infertile. But if you've gotten so far that you now have workers, you're generally in a good place. This is also why it's a good idea to have multiple queens of the same species, because there's a very good chance that one, two, maybe three of them are infertile, one of them may just end up dying, and one of them may end up being very successful. So always get a few queens if possible. So Lacia's species, they spin a cocoon and when they hatch their cocoon, or other species hatch their pupae, they will come out in a kind of see-through color. Black ants might be pretty brownish yellowish and orange ants might also be this see-through orange color. And that is because the exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet. Now depending on the species, if it's a large species, if it's a small species, the time before the worker's exoskeleton harden is very different. But a good rule to remember is they'll probably go two to three days at least. At this point in the colony, when you have your first workers, it's still not a very good idea to check on them that often. So just like in the last episode, it's still a pretty bad idea to check on them, because they will still get stressed and there is still a chance that the queens may stop laying eggs, she might eat her eggs, now the workers might stop cleaning the eggs and the whole colony can still kind of bottom out if they are getting too stressed. The good news is, this is only a thing that's really a problem for a small colony. The more workers they get, the more confident they get. But as I said, it's still a good idea not to check on them very often. Slowly, you can check on them more and more, but that's first when the second generation of workers, even the third, fourth generation of workers is coming before the colonies kind of trust you and know that you won't kill them every time you come to look at them. So now while we have talked a little bit about how you look at your ants, it is now time to feed them for the first time. And this may not be as simple as you maybe think, or it is pretty simple, but there are just a few things that you should probably know of before just feeding your ants. Like, what do we feed them? When you feed the colony for the first time, there's a few things to note. The first thing is that the colony, and by the colony I mean the workers, they will generally get very scared the first time you unplug the cotton and start to feed them. And that is because the air inside the test tube is kind of their own little environment in there. But as soon as you unplug that cotton ball, they may get very stressed and scared because suddenly this weird scent is now all the way around inside of their test tube. This is mostly workers that get scared since queen have been outside before, but this is the first time for most workers to experience this new scary scent. The second thing is what you feed them. Ants in general need sugar and protein. You give them sugar in form of honey or sugar water, and when you give them either sugar water or honey, I'd recommend that you feed them on a tinfoil dish that you make. This will 
takes some time to get used to making these small feeding dishes, but it is much better for the ants on the long term, as every time you feed them directly on the test tube, you will never get the small, disgusting parts away again. The honey has some very dirty leftovers, and these dirty, small materials that you can't really see to the naked eye will get eaten pretty fast by other animals that will suddenly be inside the test tube like small parasites. And that is, of course, very bad because you don't want parasites inside the test tube because that can harm the colony and it can harm the queen. And sometimes instead of parasite, this leftover juices will just start to mold. And again, it's very bad for the queen and workers. So I'd recommend that you put them on a tin foil so you can take it out. My experience with hunting is that as soon as it's inside the test tube, it will liquefy a lot. So I've often made some flat tin foil dishes put a drop of honey, maybe a little bit too much honey, and when I've arrived the next day, it had liquidized and come all over the test tube, which is very bad because it can end up molding, like I just said before. So keep it on a tin file, and the same with protein. Again, when you're giving them insects, I'd recommend putting it on a tin foil because then you can take it in and out as you please. That was a pretty long second thing, I know. But the third thing is that when you're feeding them protein, most people say give them mealworms because mealworms are easy to keep and it is easy, 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 easy. A lot of easy, it's easy to have a mealworm farm, but I don't recommend feeding them mealworms because it doesn't take much Google searching before you find out that there ain't that many nutrition inside a mealworm. That doesn't mean it's bad to feed them mealworms, it just means that there isn't that many good things in a mealworm for your ants. I have fed my ants mealworms a lot of times and I can clearly see when I'm giving them insects, they love insects instead of mealworms. This can also be because they have gotten mealworms their whole life, but a general thing is give insects instead of mealworms. Some people also feed ants protein jelly and personally I have heard a lot of people say my ants don't like protein jelly. I have experienced a little bit more when I would myself and I've also concluded that it does take quite a large colony before they start eating this protein jelly and since your test tube colony isn't large, don't feed them protein jelly from the get-go. But when the colony is around 50 to 100 workers, you can try introducing them and see how they react. So if you shouldn't use mealworms, what should you then use? I have bought insects a lot of times and sometimes I've just catched some insects around my house. Now these are two very different things, because when you're buying an insect in a store, they are mostly clean, doesn't mean they are always clean, but most of the time it's a clean insect. But if you're taking a spider or something from your house, they may have parasites and that is of course bad because then the ants will be introduced to these parasites. So, like many other ant keepers, I'd really recommend that you boil all the food you give them, even though it's just a mealworm, they may have some parasites as well. I personally have never boiled an insect before, so it's quite hard for me to sit here and say boil your insects, but there's a very good chance that the colony may end up dying because these parasites kill the colony. I have lost a lot of colonies in my pretty short time of being an ant keeper, and they have mostly died in kind of mysterious ways. And that could be because the parasites from different spiders I've given them have killed them. So I generally just buy my insects and not just take random insects from my house anymore because I don't want to boil them. So when you kill insects, the nurse will kind of make the ants insect move a lot. And since your ants aren't that confident, if you pro suddenly put something inside their little secure home, a new scent is inside because you have just disturbed them with the cotton ball taken out. And then suddenly there's something inside the test tube that starts wiggling. Because you just killed it and you just gave it to the ants. The ants may get very scared of this. And they may end up again stepping on the X larvae or eating the X or larvae. And it's just very bad for the colony to give them something moving the first time. I'm not saying that you shouldn't never give ants something that's moving because of course ants are used to that but they don't get used to it when it's suddenly inside the home. So in the beginning I'd just recommend that you feed them something that isn't moving. If you have a mealworm then don't give them the head and the legs because the head and the legs is moving up to two hours after you killed them just due to the nerves. So try to give them something that isn't moving 
as much as possible. And my last kind of feeding tip is take the food out around one to two days after you initially feed them. If it's inside an outworld, it doesn't matter that much because in an outworld there's ventilation and if you introduce mites to the outworld, it wouldn't be a problem at all. But when you have a dead insect inside your little protected test tube, just like if you have honey or sugar water on the inside of the test tube and haven't put a tinfoil dish inside, the parasites will come inside and the mold will come inside. And parasites and mold are bad for the ants. I can say this a million times. So what I normally do is I just take out the feeding dish every one to two days after I feed them because then there won't be any harmful bacteria inside that yet. Some people say wait a week, but again wait a week is kind of an outworld recommendation, not a test tube recommendation. So take your food out within a day or two after you feed them. Shorting it up a little bit, boil the insects, put them on a feeding dish, make sure that the insect isn't moving, give it to the ants, put them back in the dark and within one to two days take them out and take the food out. Even though it may just be hunting and it may look like the ants haven't touched it at all, trust me, they have touched it. Else, I'd say enjoy the colony and try to only check on them two to three times a week and two of the three times being feeding them and taking the food out. And I'd say try to feed them once every week. I feed my colonies in the weekend. I don't know if it's if it's too often or not too often. For the most part you can say ants can't be fed too often. But then again, in their founding stages, they shouldn't be disturbed that much. So I'd say feed them in the weekend, take it out in the weekend, and then try not to look at them. It is very hard, but trust me, within not that many weeks, you will have a great colony to look at every day. And yeah guys, that has been it for this video. So I'm hoping that you have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed making the video. So for me, it's time for hibernation and therefore this series will stop for half a year and then maybe I'll go back and do the next steps. But from now on and onwards, your colony should just be steadily growing and slowly. You don't really need any tips because you are finding them out yourself. And if you're finding them out, leave them in the comments. Please do it. But yeah guys, let's round up this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video.